Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be looking at an equation with complex numbers. We have six powers on both sides but does that mean this is a hexic equation or is it something else? Let's go ahead and find out. I'll be presenting I think at least three methods and let me know if you know of any other method like a fourth or a fifth method that can be used. So let's start with the first method. My first method is usually the most typical standard straightforward method, which is using the binomial theorem, obviously, right? If you think about the binomial theorem, uh, it uses the binomial coefficients like 6 choose 0, 6 choose 1, 6 choose 2, in other words, the Pascal's triangle. And if you remember the fifth row, uh, fifth row it's 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, 1, right? It kind of, the previous one, you can also write 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. And then by adding the, can, the neighboring uh, coefficients, you can just get the next one. But again, we're going to do uh, some addition here and we'll get the next row in Pascal's triangle and it's going to look like this. So these are going to be my coefficient for uh, a plus b to the sixth power. So this is what z plus 1 to the sixth power is going to look like. It's going to be z to the sixth plus 6, 0 to the fifth. By the way, since the next term is 1, I don't need to worry about it. Just write the powers of z with the coefficients 15z to the fourth and then plus 20z to the third plus 15z to the second. Notice that there's a symmetry here 6z and then my finally plus 1. Okay, this is equal to z minus 1 to the 6. Uh, all you have to do is alternate these terms, right? And you're going to get something like this plus minus plus minus. The terms with uh, um, even power are going to be positive, while uh, odd powers of z will be uh, led by a negative coefficient. Okay? So, these two things are equal. They're kind of gigantic, but notice that a lot of things are going to cancel out. The even powers, z to the 6, z to the 4th, z squared, and 1. z to the 6, z to the 4th, z squared, and 1. Let's go ahead and put everything on the same side. This will just be doubled, doubled and doubled. So we're going to get 12z to the fifth plus 40z to the third plus 12z equals zero. Awesome. This is nice because we can divide everything by 4, 3z to the fifth plus 10z cubed plus 3z equals 2. Awesome. Not only that, we can also factor out, not that 3z, of course, 10 doesn't isn't divisible by three I mean you could still do it but it won't be I don't know you can do it if you want but I'm gonna factor out a z 3z to the fourth plus 10z squared plus 3 okay great now not only this is factorable but also the expression inside the parentheses is a biquadratic it's quartic but by way of substitution let's go ahead and call this w we can turn this into a quadratic. We're going to get, first of all, z equals 0 as one of the solutions. And you can actually verify that it works. Plug it into the original. You get 1 to the 6 equals negative 1 to the 6, which is true. Now, the next thing you can do is write this as a quadratic. 3w squared plus 10w plus 3 equals 0. Now, you can use the x method, whatever. I'll use the quadratic formula. Same idea. Negative b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, that will be a 36. Their difference will be a 64, the square root of 64 is an 8, so this is going to give me negative 10 plus minus 8 divided by 6, which can be simplified as negative 5 plus minus 4 divided by 3. And then we can kind of split these up into w equals negative 3 and w equals negative 1 third. They're both negative. You probably knew that because the sum is negative, the product is positive. Okay? From Vieta's formulas, if you know what I'm talking about. So those are the W values, but remember, W is Z squared. So we can now need to set these equal to Z squared. So Z squared equals negative 3 because W is Z squared. From here, we get two solutions. Z is equal to square root of 3i or z is equal to negative square root of 3i. And if you want, you can call these z sub 1, z sub 2, whatever. And the other w value is negative 1 third. Same idea, 
z can be written as 1 over square root of 3i and the opposite of that. There are always two numbers, remember, whose square equals a non-zero number, non-zero real number, right? Okay. So, those are the solutions. That's it, pretty much done, case closed. Let's go ahead and take a look at the second method real quick. My second method is actually going to use a different idea, and that'll be factoring. And the factoring is basically, we can put these on the same side, right? And then use some formulas, some identities. Which identities should I use? Well, I could probably use difference of two cubes because this is this can be written as z plus one squared cubed minus z minus one squared and then cubed. Let's focus on the cubes first on the outside. So difference of two cubes, right? This is a, this is b, so we have a cubed minus b cubed. Makes sense? So a cubed minus b cubed is factored as a minus b, a squared plus ab plus b squared. Okay, this is my a, this is my b, remember that. So first, a minus b. It's going to be one of the factors, right? The other is a squared, so we're going to square this one more time, right? Plus ab, we're going to multiply these together. And plus b squared, which is the other term with the fourth power because it's squared squared. Got it? Now, if you subtract these two things, the n terms are going to cancel out. We're going to end up with 2z plus 2z. 2z or not 2z. Do you see what I z or do you z what I z? Anyways, that kind of worked, right? 4z. And then the other term is hmm, kind of confusing. Well, if you can go ahead and expand it, you're going to get some terms like z to the fourth, 4z cubed. And then from here, you're going to get some terms that cancel out. And then you're going to get something else from here. All together, guess what? That should give you the uh, formula that we received before. Remember the quartic that we got? You should be getting the exact same thing. But it's just going to be a little bit more painful. Well, the first method was kind of painful too. But I'll leave it as an exercise because I need to talk about the third method real quick. Okay, ready? This is fun. So the third method, and I'm pretty sure you thought about it, at least some of you thought about it, and please know, please let us know if you know the fourth method or the fifth. We're going to divide both sides by this. And the reason is simple. That's going to give us 1 on the right-hand side, right? Obviously, I don't want z to be 1. I have to be careful, make sure z does not equal 1. Wait a minute. z equals 1 doesn't work anyways, right? Who cares? 2 to the 6 does not equal 0. So we're good. We don't have to worry about it. Now. This gave us something nice, but we're going to make it nicer. Uh, let's go ahead and use a common exponent here. You know what that means? This means that we're dealing with sixth roots of unity. So let's go ahead and write this one as e to the power 2 pi n i. And then we're going to divide both sides by 6 or raise both sides to the power 1 over 6. And that's going to be e to the power 2 pi n i divided by 6, which you can simplify as e to the power pi n i over 3. Here you can use n equals 0, but it's not going to give you a solution because this can't be 1, right? Obviously, this can't be 1. So n equals 0 is not allowed, but you can use n equals other values. But let's go ahead and find out how we can solve for z from here. You can go ahead and kind of distribute, and then you're going to be able to isolate z from here, okay? So you can kind of put the z terms together and factor like this. And this will give you that. And then finally, by division, you can go ahead and write your answer in terms of n. And then when you change n with certain values, such as you know 1 or 2 or 3 or whatever, you'll get all the solutions. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.